Saturn's largest moon. A world crackling with electricity, its landscape appears unnatural, formed not by the super-powerful winds that blast the surface, but rather, it may be, by giant sand-dwelling creatures who live off electricity. Life forms on Earth show the potential for such creatures to evolve. On Earth, we have sandworms. We have creatures that generate electricity, even creatures that could survive on Titan. One of the most successful body plans, in effect, are nematode worms. Nematode worms are extremophiles, able to survive in the most hostile environments on Earth, such as volcanic deep sea vents. You can find them living almost everywhere on Earth. In fact, about four out of every five creatures on this Earth is a nematode worm. They are all over the place. You've eaten some today, I guarantee it. In the atmosphere of Titan, creatures that are tiny on Earth could grow to enormous sizes. Life on Earth is limited by the forces of gravity. This is why we don't see organisms like a butterfly that gets as big as an eagle, because gravity keeps them smaller. Titan has a gravity that's about one-seventh the Earth's, and that could potentially allow creatures, if they evolved on Titan, to be bigger than what you would expect on Earth. You can even imagine that on Titan, that we have something like Frank Herbert's Dune, a famous sci-fi novel and movie where you have these gigantic worm-like creatures that are just marauding through the deserts on their planet. Maybe the same thing's happening on Titan. What if space debris from some asteroid collision or an infected probe were to carry organic material the short distance from Titan to Earth? What's, what's the first thing it would go for? Would our power grids be uh, you know, the best buffet that it's ever had? They would have a voltage smorgasbord and suck all the power out of the Earth's electric system. We would go back to the Dark Ages. The next NASA craft heading to Titan could be Dragonfly, due to land there in 2034. Until then, we don't know what might be roaming the sands of Titan. We cannot tell what electric beings might look like. We can only hope that when Dragonfly arrives, what happens on Titan stays on Titan. October 25th, 2016. NASA scientists detect a rogue asteroid cruising through our solar system. Early calculations predict only a 2% chance of an impact with the Earth. It starts out as just a dim, faintly seen light through a telescope. But as astronomers pin down more information, they start to feel uneasy. The asteroid is tracked for a further three months, and in January 2017, the probability of impact jumps massively. Refinements of its orbit show it coming closer and closer to Earth with ever greater certainty. 60% chance that it'll hit Earth. The view of the asteroid is blocked by the sun, and scientists hold their breath. When it reappears in May 2017, urgent recalculations are made. Further observations show that there's an 80% chance. Eventually, it's 100%. This object is on a course with Earth, and there's no way we're going to miss it. As the asteroid closes in on the Earth, more details are revealed. Early measurements indicate that this monstrous space rock is between 300 and 800 feet across. The question is, where will it strike? Telescopes around the world are focused on the object. November 2017, the final data comes through. The asteroid will impact the Earth on September 20th, 2020. The location of the impact will be somewhere in Southern California. NASA and FEMA try to predict the extent of the destruction. If it actually hits land, Southern California is going to be wiped out. Do you evacuate all of Los Angeles County and the surrounding area? The problem is, if you don't know that orbit well enough, you could 
be completely wrong and you could have moved people to the disaster zone. The scientists know that there are no good outcomes when a rock this size slams into our world. Luckily, it's just a simulation. The LA Impact is a war game scenario designed to test how prepared we would be to deal with an asteroid strike. When it comes to an asteroid or a comet hitting the Earth, it's not about if, it's about when. When will it happen and will we be prepared? In 2008, scientists detect 20 large objects a year passing close to the Earth. By 2018, that number has more than tripled to 76. It's terrifying. The recent alarming rise in the number of asteroids almost hitting our planet is greatly increasing the likelihood of an Earth-shattering apocalypse. It's going to be a disaster unlike anything we have seen in recorded human history. Death in the skies could be due any day. But why is there such a rapid and worrying rise in the number of near misses? Astronomers have recently discovered we are about to enter what is, in effect, a kind of gigantic asteroid minefield. The Earth moves around the sun, but our whole solar system is actually moving in the Milky Way. Our solar system slowly moves up and down like a cosmic fairground carousel through the plane of the galaxy. And that movement has terrifying consequences. So the universe is massive, but there's about 80% of that stuff we cannot see. We call that dark matter. The leading theory for dark matter is these particles probably form a thin disk of dark matter throughout our galaxy. Researchers believe that this disk of dark matter has enormous gravitational powers. As our sun moves up and down through our galaxy, it hits denser bands. And it just might be that dark matter is causing objects to be thrown our way. Effectively, dark matter is using its gravity well to slingshot asteroids and comets towards us. Earth has not passed through this terrifying danger zone of dark matter for tens of millions of years. But the increasing number of asteroids suggests we may be headed for the dark matter disk once more, and at speed. The results could be nothing less than a planetary catastrophe.